What's up guys? You asked for it. We're going to try to fix this hot stuff claw machine here in this video. If you remember in a previous video, this machine was at our ice cream and candy shop location. And I don't know if somebody shook the machine really hard or what, but the gantry that was inside ended up down in the playfield area. I'll show it here on the screen to show you what I'm talking about. But ever since then, this machine just has not worked properly. And uh, we'll kind of go through what I think the problem is. We'll take a look, we'll dig deeper and see if we can't figure out what the issue with this machine is. So if you guys like these style of videos, make sure you leave them a like. All right, guys, enjoy the show. What's up guys, Matt here with Galaxy Games 843, back with another claw machine repair video. You guys asked for it, you put in the comments that you wanted to see the claw machine repair. So we're gonna try and get this machine repaired in this video. So like I was saying in the intro, this machine is broke. Uh, somebody shook the machine or something, knocked the gantry down into the playfield area. And ever since then, it just hasn't worked right. So uh, we had to replace the strings. We've got a brand new string in this machine. Um, let's take a look inside and I'll, I'll kind of show you what the heck I'm talking about. Let's take a look inside. All right, here's the inside of the machine. Right now we've got the machine powered down and I've got some string um, on the claw kind of pulled out so you can see where it's at. So um, we've done videos like this in the past where we've had um, issues with the motors which are up inside here, but I don't think that's the case this time. And let me show you why. First and foremost, we're gonna power the machine on and you'll see it pull the, uh, pull the claw up. But the problem is it doesn't know when to stop. What happens is that when this comes up, this is supposed to push this right here up which should uh, release the lever on this switch because right now it's being pulled down due to the fact that the claw is down. But when it comes up, that switch should open or close. I'll explain that later in the video. And then that should tell the board that, hey, the claw has reached the top position. It's time to go back home, right? That's what's supposed to happen, but that's not what's happening. All right, let me show you what's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and power the machine on. You'll see the claw come all the way up and it'll wanna keep trying to pull it up and then it'll just stop and it'll give me an error because it's not being reported that the claw is up. So let's turn it on, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, machine's powering up, you'll see the lights come on, then you'll see the claw raise, and I'll, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Up and stop, right? And just clicked, now you can see we're running uh, an 01 error down here on the, uh, on the board, and, or on the, uh, the pry, the, what the heck's it called? On the display there. And if you can hear my dogs in the background, don't mind. Those are the vending dogs. They're just, uh, they want to be part of the video. But, so, basically the 01 error uh, means it's an up-down error. And that could be, you know, a cause of many things. It could be a bad switch. This is the up-down switch. It could be part of the wiring or something like that, which we, you know, that's what, that's where I think the problem is. Um, so what we're going to do next, we're actually going to pull the gantry out of the machine. We're going to put it on a work table and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at some of, more, some of the more details as to where the problem might be. So let me go ahead and get set up for that shot and we'll be right back with more. All right, we've got the gantry out of the machine. Uh, you can see here's the, uh, here's the end of the wires, the plugs right here. Um, and what we're, what we're looking at is in this general area right here. So obviously the claw is all the way up. The switch should be... Um, open, closed. Uh, I'll explain that, like I said, in just a minute here. First thing we're going to do though, is we're going to test the switch. So we're going to use a digital multimeter. And if you guys don't have one of these, this is one of the most often used tools in the uh, arcade and claw machine repair industry. This can check voltages for your power supplies. But what we're going to be using it for right now is to check continuity. Continuity is what we want to check. So um, let me see if I can't get a better close up of this switch here. So this switch, let me, let me zoom in a little bit here. There we go. All right, this switch right here, this black switch, this one right here, this is the up-down switch. So basically how a switch works is these uh, micro switches, they've got two settings. They've got normally open and they've got normally closed. So you can see this one up here, um, it's got a ground, it's got the normally open, and the normally closed tabs. I don't know if you can see that real well, but this one, it's got a, the, the common or the ground wire on the ground tab, and this one's set to normally open. So think of it like, um, like, a, like a drawbridge. So here's the, uh, here's the path of, I guess I should, I should zoom back out for this. So 
There we go, all the way zoomed out. All right, so here's the path of electricity, right? So when you push a button or close the switch, it creates a connection and lets electricity flow through it. Um, in, in this case, this, this switch up here is set so that when, when this closes, it allows the electricity to run through it, okay? This one though is set a little bit different. This one's set on normally closed. That means it's already closed and electricity is already flowing through it. And that when, you, when the switch is tripped, it opens up. So it's normally closed, but then it opens up. So right now we're gonna check a couple things. So what we're listening for is a beep. I don't know if you can hear this on camera, but that is a continuity beep. And what this does is it just sends a small voltage through one to the other. And when it makes a connection, it beeps. Hmm, it's gonna make a liar out of me now. There it is. Hear the beep? Okay. So what we're looking for, we're gonna test this switch. And right now, um, it's, uh, like I said, it's set for normally closed, which means when we put these two together, it should create a beep. Actually, is it open right now? Mm, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Wait, maybe the switch is our problem. All right, let me, uh, let me do this. I'm gonna pull the switch off so we can get a better look at it. All right, so I've got the switch removed. Now notice this one has an extra piece on it. So a lot of the switches don't have this extra piece. This is specifically for a claw machine so that uh, that lever, this arm, will activate the little switch right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I know it's tough. So here is a normal standard micro switch that it's used in most arcade games and claw machines. This one obviously doesn't have the little arm, but I'm not sure if you can move those arms or not. That's what they look like next to each other. We might, well, you know, if this is a bad switch, we might be able to move that arm. But let me show you first and foremost how this works, okay. So here's the, the this is a brand new switch. I'm gonna put one lead on the normally open and one lead on the ground, and then I'm gonna close the circuit by pressing the button, the micro switch, and it should beep. Do you guys hear that? It beeps. Okay, now we're gonna move one to normally, normally closed. I probably should get my alligator clips out for this, but see how that already beeps, okay? And when you press the, the switch, it should interrupt the circuit then. There, the beep shuts off. All right, so that is how it's supposed to work. Now we're gonna try this switch here. So this is, uh, let's see, this is normally open and the ground. Let's see if it beeps. Okay, that beeps, right? Now we're gonna try how it's wired. This is normally, normally uh, closed and the ground, and this should beep too, and it does. Okay, so the switch is fine. Let's go ahead and interrupt it. There you go. So the switch is working properly. So that's not our issue. I'm gonna put this back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I've got it back together. We confirm that switch is good. So that is definitely not the problem, but what the heck else could be the problem? So we know the motor works because the, uh, the claw pulls up, but there's definitely something in this, you know, in this whole circuit telling the switch or telling the board that the switch, that the claw is up. So next I'm gonna take a look at the wiring. So um, all these wires run through these, uh, it's kind of like a, almost like a spring, you can see, to kind of keep these wires from being stressed. But what's weird is the colors here don't really match up with the colors here. It's kind of weird. Um, so what I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do is probably open this up here and follow the wires to trace them through. Um, because I've ran continuity from these wires to here. In fact, we'll do it real quick, um, just so I can show you what I'm talking about. Let me grab some alligator clips, it's just gonna make it easier. Okay, before we put the alligator clips on, so I started to take the, the plastic housing off around this, this uh, connector, and it looks kinda suspect. So this actual connector right here looks kinda suspect. So I think I've got some other connectors let me try splicing on a new connector. We'll put it back together. We'll put it back in the machine, we'll test it, just to rule out that it's not the connection right here, because this very well could be the issue. Let me go grab a new connector, I'll splice it on there, then we'll test it in the machine, and just to rule that out. So let's do that next. All right, so funny story, usually I keep all those connectors on hand, but apparently I'm out of stock of these connectors. So what I did was I peeled back a little bit of the actual wire sheathing there, 
And we're just gonna do a quick test to make sure that that's getting continuity. Okay, so again, continuity goes like this. Oh, I gotta set it the right way. Hear the beep? Okay, so I'm gonna put one end on this connector and one end on the actual wire over here. And it's beeping. Okay, so the connector's fine. So the connector is definitely not our issue. I'm gonna get just a tiny little piece of electrical tape just to secure that back up where I pulled the wire back just a little bit. So let's just put a little bit of tape there. That'll protect that wire going forward. And we'll put it back on the switch. Well, we'll leave it off for now. All right, next I think I need to open up this section and follow these wires, see where these wires go. So I'm gonna take this off and then we'll move on and see what we need to do next. Okay, got the wires off. Let's kind of just lift this up, take this backing piece off. Now we should be able to get a better view in here as to where the heck our wires are going. All right, so this pink wire out here comes back and loops around and it goes to a very light pink, light pink wire, okay? So it goes into this uh, mess of wires here. And here in the middle, you guys can see over here. Now, now I'm looking over here to see if I can find the pink wire over here. Because if so, what we're gonna do is I'm probably gonna have to clip, clip this. And we'll replace all of our zip ties. And I hope you guys are happy because it's August in South Carolina and I'm outside working in the non-air conditioned area. So hopefully you guys are happy with this video. <laughs> All right, so there's our, there's the pink wire right there. Okay. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna strip just a little bit. Whoops, <laughs> well we cut the wire. That's no good. So I'm probably gonna have to solder that back together because there's not, there's not a lot of room to work. So let's strip that wire there. Let's test this for continuity now. I'm gonna hold it right on the wire here and I'll tap it on the connector over here. We got nothing. So there must be a break in the wire somewhere. Okay. All right, let me dig into this. Let me figure out, you know, if there, if there is in fact a break in the wire and we'll, uh, we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so apparently I wasn't making a very good connection. So we do have continuity. What I've done, I've ran an alligator clip to the actual wire and then to the negative side of my lead. And now I'm just gonna take the red lead and tap this uh, connector over here. Well, it was just working a second ago. See, my, my multimeter is not working right. Okay, there we go. Let's try this again. All right, let me get a different multimeter because this one is giving me issues. Yes, I have two. All right, had to change the battery on the Fluke. This is a Fluke multimeter, and this one doesn't, the beep doesn't always work. Um, I really just need to invest in a new Fluke, honestly. This has a nice little stand on it, though, it seems like. All right, so let's stand this up. So uh, can, it, can we see the screen on camera? Doesn't look like we can really see the screen very well. Um, but basically, when we, when we tap these together, oh, it is beeping now, okay. The beep isn't always consistent, but here we go, we got the beep. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you that we do have continuity. 
So I'm gonna put the negative lead connected to this and we're just gonna tap this uh, connector over here. So see, we've got good continuity, okay. Beep's great, all right. So we know that it's good up into this wire here. Now what we need to do is find the other end of the wire. So we're gonna pull this back a little bit as well. Cause I'm gonna have to repair that. Let's clip this to this side of the wire now. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the continuity in one of these connectors over here. So let's keep going. We're just gonna probe around at all the different wires inside so we find continuity. Okay, nothing on that side. There's our continuity, it's a, okay. It, so it, it once was a pink wire over here. So we've gone continuity all the way through, right? Okay, well, that's good to know. All right, so let's check our ground next. So I'm gonna move this over to, I guess it's upside down now, huh? I am, I'm recording right now. Oh, you are? Yes. Mrs. Galaxy Games joining the show. Hey. <laughs> All right, we're gonna test continuity now. I think it's gonna be this one right here. Okay, let's check the rest of them. Okay, we got no continuity on that side. Let's check the other side here. Okay, so it might be our ground wire. So let's follow that next. It looks like it goes up to here. So I'm getting my wires in a mess here, guys. Let's unhook that next. And let's check from here to here. So we've got continuity there. And then this wire is gonna go from here to, I think it's gonna be this wire. So let's test this here. Yeah, I think we've got a break in the ground. That would make more sense. So let's follow the ground next. Oh, here it is. Here it is right here, guys. The ground is broken right here. And I don't know if that was done prior to me messing around in here or not, but I'm gonna guess it wasn't. There's our broken ground wire. That's exactly what the problem is. So next I need to solder these wires up, clean them up and make them all connected. And then I think that's gonna solve our problem. Let me go get my soldering iron out and heat it up and good to go so we can get this, uh, these wires fixed up. And we'll be right back. All right, so I think this should be a better view of the wires. As you can see, this was our ground wire that was broken. This pink one I cut to test. So this brown or this gray one was broken. So um, we're gonna try and just solder them back together. I do have some heat shrink tubing uh, that we're gonna put over it to protect it. My soldering iron is heating up right now, but let's just cut a couple pieces of that so it's ready to go. There's our heat shrink. Okay, so I'm gonna start by well, let's see. I'm gonna start by tinning all the ends. And basically when you're tinning all the ends, right, you know, right now they're just fraying wires. So when you tin them, it makes them kind of a nice solid uh, point when you're soldering. So that's what we're gonna try and do first. We're trying to tin all the wires. So is my soldering iron heated up enough? Let's see. And guys, get good at soldering if you're going to uh, do some repairs. Here's my soldering iron. Let's go ahead and just put some fresh solder on the ends of the wires. There we go. That just tins them up real nice so that they're solid and not fraying all over the place. There's a couple good connections, good tins. So all we're doing is we're kind of making it solid. There we go, all right. All wires are now tinned, which means there are going to be a lot easier to actually complete the solder joints. So I might have put two big of blobs on there though. 
Let me clean this one up just a bit. There, that's better. Okay, and the reason why I did that is so I can get this little piece of heat shrink over. We're just gonna slide it over the end. And I hope you guys can see this really good. So now we're gonna solder these gray wires back together. And all I'm really gonna do is just try and line them up like so, and just tap them so the solder sticks to itself. And then we'll let it cool or harden in that case. And now it's a good connection. So before we do anything else, before we seal it up, let's do a test for continuity on these. So I'm gonna put the alligator clip back on the negative lead and connect the negative lead over here to the ground on the, on the gantry. And now we're gonna test it inside this plug. And we're listening for that beep again. Let's see, which one was it? This one. Good, we got the beep, okay. So that side should be good. Let's go ahead and put our heat shrink over it. We're just gonna use our soldering iron to, sh to shrink that heat shrink right there. We're just gonna hold the warm soldering iron right up against the heat shrink tubing. And that should kind of just make it tighten down around the wire and kind of protect it, protect that solder joint. That's all we're doing. Okay, that looks good. All right, now the pink one, the pink wire is gonna be a little more challenging because there's not as much wire to work with. Uh, it's a little bit tighter, tighter of a fit. And my hand's probably in the way, I, I know, I know. Um, hold on one second. Gotta pull that pink wire out. And you can see the other end of the pink wire here. Let's put our heat shrink over this end. There, our heat shrink is over it. Now this one's gonna be, like I said, a little bit more challenging because the wires don't wanna line up as easily for me. So I'm just gonna try and do this. This is, like I said, this is, <laughs> soldering, this is where you need three hands. Um, as a matter of fact, let's do this. Let's see if I can use my alligator clip to kind of just kind of hold it in place for, for me. Don't know if this is gonna work, but let's try it. Okay, I've got my alligator clip holding it in place. I'm just gonna tap a little, little fresh solder on there. And I think it's sticking together. We'll know for sure when we take the alligator clip off right here. Okay, it looks like it's stuck together. So I'm gonna move the alligator clip on the other side to the other connector. And now we're gonna test for continuity over on this side again. So it's this one. Okay, looks good. All right, let's put our heat shrink over that solder joint, that connection to protect it. And just like last time, we're gonna use our soldering iron to shrink it. Heat is all you need. Some people use a flick lighter, some people use the soldering iron. I'm just using a soldering iron. But there we go, all right, so everything's back together. Um, all our connections are good. I'm gonna put you guys back on the tripod, we're gonna put the gantry back in the machine, and we're gonna test to see if this fixed the problem. So cross your fingers, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go, let's put the gantry back in the machine and see if this works. All right guys, it's moment of truth time. We've got the gantry back in the machine. Haven't powered it on yet, haven't tested it. Little nervous, but I am, I'm hopeful that that ground issue is what was gonna solve our problem. So fingers crossed guys, let's power the machine on. Let's see what happens, here we go. It's gonna take a few seconds to start up. There's the lights. It returns home. Hey, I think we fixed the problem, but there's only one true way to tell. Uh, let me grab some plush. I've got just a bag of generic plush out here. Uh, what do we want to go for? We're gonna go for this uh, lobster plush. We're, gonna, we're just gonna drop him in the machine. He's pretty heavy, so he might not win really easily, but it's good. Move it around so you can see what's going on here. Oh guys, we fixed the problem. Oh, but our claw's not closing. Did you see that? 
our claw isn't closing, it looks like the string is wound up the wrong way. Okay. So it's going to correct itself. Did you see that? It just corrected itself. So let's try one more time now because our string looked like it was wound up improperly. So let's try this one more time. Now the string looks good. Nope. I think we've got too much string on there. So watch this again. The string's going to rewind. See, now it's going the right direction. So there's obvious, obviously still some sort of issue with the string. Um, let me take a look at that next. Maybe we've got too much string in there because like I said, we, we replaced the string and there was excess string. So I might have to trim the string down just a bit. Let me take a look at it. I'll be right back. All right, running a few more tests. I know the issue is with the string. Uh, we haven't changed the string yet, but watch this. So, you know, basically what happens is when the claw reaches the bottom, it's supposed to close. This arm swings up and hits this switch. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to, I'm going to manually hit the switch mid drop and you'll see the clock close. Watch this. See that that's how a claw machine is supposed to work. When the claw hits the bottom, this arm up here, this arm is supposed to swing, which closes the switch and closes the claw. So we definitely have a string issue next. So let me try shortening the string and we'll go from there. All right, so long story short, when I replaced the string last, I remember on location, the string broke. When the gantry fell, the string broke. Apparently the string I was using was not the right thickness. It was not the right length. So I actually had this one in, in my uh, spare parts, my inventory. Just wanna say thanks to candymachines.com for always sending extra parts when you buy machines from them. I bought the Quick Play uh, key catcher claw machine from them. They sent an extra string and other stuff too. So big shout out to candymachines.com for always sending extra stuff and just being an overall great company. All right, so I've got the string replaced with a, with a longer string this time. Got my Z pattern going on up there. I don't know if you can see the Z pattern. It's a little loose right now, but that's what it looks like. So we're gonna power it up. It should pull the claw up and then return to home. So let's get the camera set properly. Let's make sure it, power, it, uh, it pulls the claw up and then returns to home. It might have to rewind once. Nope, it's wound the right way. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna try again and make sure that the swing arm is swinging and the claw closes. I'm gonna actually set the camera down towards the play field here. We're gonna try and grab this lobster toy. It's probably too big, but we're gonna try it. There we go. We are fixed, guys. This machine is done, it's working, the claw closed. Oh, it's off the rails. It's off the rails, let me fix that real quick next. It's gonna throw an error code, hold on. I didn't have it on the rails good. Let me power it off. There, I think that's good. All right, let's try one more time here. <laughs> it's one thing after another with this machine, right? Here we go. All right, let's give it one more test just to make sure it stays on the rails. I'll try and follow the camera with it here a little bit too. There's the close. Back up. Ooh. Holy cow! <laughs> All right. Apparently I need rail guards on this machine because the rail guards, you see the rail guards actually go right here. Uh, the rail guards are missing. So it cracked my uh, plastic. That's no good. But at least you guys got some fireworks at the end of the video, right? All right, let me uh, put this back up here one more time. All right, so there we go. So. Obviously, like I said, I need some rail guards and I broke my plastic. That, that, that probably upsets me the most. I broke the plastic right there. So plastic's broken. But the good news is we repaired the machine, guys. So 
I'm gonna get this uh, cleaned up and uh, we'll wrap this video up. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Hot Stuff Claw Machine Repair here on the Galaxy Games 843 YouTube channel. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know it was, you know, it was actually a pretty easy fix. Just a broken wire, really. And then, you know, that led to more problems that we had to correct. And we still need to order some rail guards so that gantry doesn't fall down again. Who knows? Maybe no one ever shook the machine in the first place. Maybe uh, just because we didn't have those, those rail guards there. Maybe it just fell like that. So I'm glad we were able to get it taken care of. I'm glad we know, you know, the, the easy little parts we need to order to keep make sure that those uh, that gantry stays up there. But guys, we fixed the machine. It was just a broken ground wire. So I knew it was a problem somewhere in that switch or wiring and we were correct. So we fixed that, that wire up and now this machine works again. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something today. I really do love doing these repair videos and maybe teaching something to, to some of you out there. So again, hopefully you enjoyed. One more reminder, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to Galaxy Games 843 YouTube channel. Really does help out. We're trying to grow and we need your help. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell notification too so you get notified when new videos from Galaxy Games 843 go live. With that said, guys, we're wrapping this video up right here. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.